Hello and welcome to a home Bible study. From my home to your home. This is Robert Holler thanking you once again for taking the time to observe this video. And to those that view it and respond and subscribe. Thank you so very much. It's so very encouraging to hear from you. Today's topic, the most dangerous altered verse in all of scripture by man. What say you? Now this video and teaching is going to challenge you, and that's my hope and prayer that it does, to look at scripture and to realize what man's influence can have when he puts his finite mind and finite wisdom into altering or changing the Word of God. Now, anytime you'll find that if you study the Word of God and then you find places where you're looking at different Bibles that contain verses that don't sound the same or are not written the same as it is in all Bibles, and that's because man has got or has involved himself in changing these verses. And any time the Word of God is altered, changed, or whatever, for the most part, man has to add to it in order to make it what he wants it to be. Now, there's a very specific verse in Scripture in Proverbs chapter 30, verse 6, that says, Add thou not unto his word, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. And we're going to look at a one verse out of all the 31,102 verses in Scripture. This verse can be probably deemed the most important verse in all of Scripture that contains or pertains to the doctrine for the body of Christ. From Romans through Philemon, found in the revelation of the mystery of Jesus Christ, that the spiritual Jesus Christ revealed to Paul through inspiration and revelations, as Paul wrote them down to give to you and me in today's age of grace, the dispensation of the grace of God, the gospel of Jesus Christ, which is not only for us, but to us. Now, we have covered in previous studies that all of the Bible is for us. It's for our learning. You can read that in uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 5, uh, 4. So we know that all the Bible is for our learning, but not all the Bible is to us for our doctrine. And that's why studying this study that is being presented is so critical for people to understand and take a look at it from what man has done versus what God has done from the very beginning. Now, again, out of the 31,102 verses, this one particular verse is the only one in Scripture that tells mankind why they should study God's Word and how to study God's Word. And we're going to give you the verse... It's in 2 Timothy, chapter 2, verse 15. Now, I want you to look at where it was written, when it was written, what was written, and to whom it was written to. And I want you to be very carefully listen to the verse and look it up if you have a King James 1611 Bible, because that is what I teach from, and that is the most accurate translation or version from the original manifestation from the Greek to the English. It plainly says in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now, this study is going to give you some references and an example from an altered version of this particular verse. And then we'll get into why this verse is so 
important for the doctrine for the body of Christ now, from the revelation of the mystery of Jesus Christ, and emphasize the importance of the verse when it's not altered. Along comes mankind in his finite mind and finite wisdom. And always remember in Proverbs, there's a great verse that 1625 says, there's a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Man with his finite mind and finite wisdom congregated with groups of other men, supposedly leaders of religion, Christianity, Christian churches, denominational churches, and non-denominational churches. All of these that I just mentioned are man-made, man-founded, and came up with an altered version of this one particular verse. He has contaminated many verses, but this is the most critical one when you look at it from the doctrine of the body of Christ church the age of grace that we are in, the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I will explain why. I gave you what it was the King James 1611 Version Bible says. Now I'm going to give you an illustration from something called the NIV or the New International Version. And the reason I pick on the NIV, it is the second most popular Bible that people in these United States anyway, and predominantly a lot of the world, study. The greatest is the King James Version of the Bible by far, but secondly is the NIV. And this is what the NIV Bible, which was altered by man, make no mistake about it. And it hasn't been all that long ago either. But he has taken verse 15 of 2 Timothy and rewrites it this way. There's a way that seemeth right unto a man. Excuse me, wrong verse. He wrote, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, handling the word of God carefully. That's their watered down, perverted version of this particular verse. What makes it so dangerous? What makes it so dangerous, ladies and gentlemen, it is written in such a way from the NIV version that man has implemented, by the way, it is not Holy Spirit inspired, regardless of what mankind tries to tell you. This comes from man's finite mind and finite wisdom. He changed the last part of that verse to handle the word of God carefully. What, did, what does that mean? What is that saying to us from the word of God, supposedly? It could mean just about anything to anybody if you want to look at it from man's perspective, see? And that's exactly what mankind wants you to do because he altered it. Why did mankind alter this specific verse? The one that is the most dangerous one to touch in the body of Christ's doctrine from Romans through Philemon. Why did he do that? Well, it's simple and complex both at the same time. Because if you say handle the word of God carefully it could mean anything to anybody. I could tell you, well, that just means I carry a Bible around in a sack that and when it rains, it's not going to get wet, or I'm not going to dump it into the water puddle. I'm handling the Word of God carefully. That's kind of a simpli you know, simplified version. Or I could say, I just have to be careful how I give out the Word of God. Well, what does that mean? It, it, what it does, it brings in a lot of variables from a lot of different angles, and that's exactly what mankind was out to accomplish because these people that got together to change this particular verse came from all different ideologies of man and his religions, his Christianity, his Christian churches, denominations, and non-denominations. 
this will start to make sense. You have all these man's ideologies that split away from each other because each one wants to believe a little bit of something different. If you handle the Word of God carefully, you can make it work for each one of those entities. But you altered the Word of God. They will have to answer for that, ladies and gentlemen, because let's go back to the King James Version, the 1611 original verse. God says, study to show thyself approved unto God. So he's telling us the first thing we need to do is what his word is what? Study it. You want to be approved of God. That's what you do. You study to be approved of God. A workman. So it's going to take work to do it. And you must never be ashamed. And this is how you study his word. You rightly divide the word of truth. One of the first things we need to do is look at the word dividing from Scripture. In the Greek, it's called orthotomeo. Orthotomeo, spelled O-R-T-H-O-T-O-M-E-O. -E it means to make a straight cut, to dissect correctly the divine message. You won't find that relating to anything remotely that it means you handle the word of God correctly or carefully. Totally different perspective. Because to dissect something, ladies and gentlemen, you have to look beneath the surface. You cut and expose something. And then when you dissect, because when you look at something, let's say a frog, or even a human body, you look at a human body lying there on the table. You see a human body. You see the flesh, the head, the trunk, the legs, the arms. Then you take a scalpel and you cut into the chest wall. You peel the flesh back. You take the rib cage covering off. Something totally different is exposed inside that you can't see. You didn't know it was there. And you find a lot of different things that work together, but they all have a specific purpose to gain the common goal that they are working for. In this case, in the Word of God, it's salvation. But if you really die, divide the Word of Truth you dissect it, you're going to find something else out. And to continue on with this danger of when man altered this, like in the NIV, he hides something else from you. He not only hides the way you're supposed to study the Word of God, the way God commands you, but you'll never know what it is you are to divide. And what I mean by that. The scripture says in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, in the end of the verse, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Well, what is the word of truth? The Bible gives you a very clear definition of the word of truth is. And the word of truth, in the phrase that it is noted in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, shows up in the book of Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13. Nowhere else in Scripture is it defined as anything else like that. Other places you'll see something like God's word is truth or thy word is truth, and that's it. You'll never hear the word of truth. If you take your Bibles and open it up to, first, to the book of Ephesians, right after uh, the book of Galatians, and go to chapter 1, verse 13. It says in verse 13, In whom ye also trusted, after you heard the word of truth, there's that phrase that we're to rightly divide it. What is the word of truth? It says, in whom you trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. In whom also you have, after that ye believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Now, it's very specific in the King James Bible. 
if you rightly divide the word of truth, which is the gospel of your salvation. You are to dissect this. And when you dissect it, you're going to find out something very critical. There is more than one plan of salvation that Jesus Christ presented. One to the gospel of the kingdom, his earthly ministry that he told the 12 apostles personally and promoted. And then the one he told Paul, the spiritual revealing in the doctrine for the body of Christ from Romans to Philemon called the revelation of the mystery of Jesus Christ. You will never find that. You will never see it from the altered version like in the NIV where you just handle the word of God carefully because the word of God carefully is not giving you any idea or any specific definition from scripture now as to what it means. But in the King James Bible, the 1611 version, where it says rightly dividing the word of truth, gives you a very specific definition coming from the word of God. So it's coming from Jesus Christ himself. That is the huge danger of this altered verse that makes all the difference in one's eternal life. Think about it this way. First of all, ask yourself, why would man, in his finite mind and finite wisdom, do this to mankind or to humankind? Ask yourselves that. And that's a good question. And it all stems back from the sin nature of man, getting back to there is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end are of other ways of death. You see, Satan and his dynamic helpers are behind this to keep you from the truth of the word of God and keep you from rightly dividing or dissecting orthotomeo, the word of God. And mankind has accomplished that with the NIV. That's totally hid. You have no idea that when you read it as the NIV states it, handling the word of God carefully, that you have been blinded to what the word of truth is and what to do with it because you don't know the word of truth is the gospel of your salvation. Because the NIV, although has that in chapter 1 of Ephesians verse 13, you can't relate it back to 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 15. You understand? You can in the King James because the Bible is set up from God's perspective to teach you through Scripture about scripture. Mankind needs to leave his finite mind and finite wisdom and his sinful two cents out of the picture because all mankind can do is lie. But the reason, another reason mankind did this to humankind is to get them to follow man. Because all you remember, these people that came together from various denominations, various religion, Christian, Christianity organizations, and non-denominational settings, and made the NIV version, or the New International Version of the Bible. And the reason they did, they changed these very clever, very subtle, but mankind is also very sinful. They changed it so that it would fit their narrative. In other words, the doctrine that they come from, the background of their denomination, their non-denomination, their Christian organization, their religious organization, and their Christianity. It can fit all of those variables. If you go with the altered version, see. Because we know from Scripture in the body of Christ doctrine now, and this is what makes it so dangerous. The body of Christ doctrine is for us and to us today. Because remember, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15 First of all, when was it given? It was given after the cross, death, burial, and resurrection, ascension of Jesus Christ, after the law was taken out of the way. So it came under grace. Who was it given to? It was given to Paul to give to who? The Gentiles and the Jews. Because there's neither bond nor free, nor male nor female, Jew or Gentile, male or female. We are all one in Christ Jesus. Where do you find it? 
besides after the cross. You find it only, only, ladies and gentlemen, in the doctrine for the body of Christ, to the body of Christ's church, the Gentiles predominantly. And why was it given? So that we understand what God is talking about, my great God and Savior Jesus Christ, when he says you rightly divide or dissect the word of truth, which is the gospel of your salvation. Because they're separate. But mankind, in his finite mind and finite wisdom, thinks he's very clever by hiding that, changing that from you, keeping you in the dark, feeding you a lie. This is handle the word of God carefully. He can turn around and tell you, well, you have to abide by the teachings of Jesus Christ in his earthly ministry. And you have to abide by the teachings of Paul in his earthly ministry. And then you have to abide by the teachings in Hebrews through the book of Revelation to get it all straight and right for your salvation. That's key. And when you look at it from God's perspective, that is the worst thing man has ever done since nailing Jesus Christ to the cross. Why? Because it will keep you from salvation by grace through faith. You won't know it. You won't see it. You'll try to combine everything because your preachers, your teachers, and your denominations now are responsible. Your Christianity are responsible. Your religions are responsible for these altered versions of the Bible to keep you in the dark, to feed you a lie. If it's not God's worth, God's word, and it's not right and it's not correct, it's not a proven fact, it is absolutely an outright lie. You're going to end up with a false salvation. That's the danger why it is so critical, this one verse because this one verse belongs in one specific doctrine, the doctrine for the body of Christ, church. The age of grace that we are in today, the dispensation of the grace of God, the revelation of the mystery of Jesus Christ from Romans to Philemon, it was given to Paul to give to you and to give to me after the cross in the but now of the age of grace. But mankind has taken and is trying to hide that. And it's working very well. You will find very few people that will teach the Word of God the way God commands you to do it. Because we that teach the Bible the way God commands us to by rightly dividing the Word of Truth will do it at any cost to us because we know that's the truth of the Word of God for the doctrine, for the body of Christ, the age of grace that you live in today, for your salvation. Otherwise, you're going to have a false salvation because you're going to receive a mixed message. You're going to receive wrong doctrine. You're going to be taught everything from the times past to apply to your life today, plus what is in for us today from Romans through Philemon, and then you're going to be given the Hebrews, Hebrews through Revelation. Try and apply it all to your lives. You're going to be called a Christian. That's Old Testament. That's under the law. If you rightly divide the word of truth, you'll see this. If you handle the word of God carefully, you're not going to have any idea because you're going to listen to what it is man tells you, especially your denomination, your non-denomination, your preachers, your churches, your Christian organizations, your Christianity, and your religion. That's the expert. They wouldn't tell me a lie. I don't have time to sit down and Rightly divide the word of truth anyway. I'm just going to fully believe what it is they're telling me because they're not going to lie to me when it comes to God's word. Well, that's why they changed, altered this one specific verse. Like I said, they've altered a lot of them, but this is the most dangerous one out of all of them because, again, it is just as dangerous and a catastrophic consequences to you from them that altered it is just as damaging as it was to the Jews that nailed Jesus Christ to the cross and hollered out, crucify him, crucify him, we have no king but Caesar. It's no different when you sit there 
and you listen to a preacher or you read the NIV or the NSAV and the many other altered American Standard Version, New English Version, whatever, and look at them. And you're not sure that's the first Bible you ever picked up. So you're going to believe what it is you read because your pastor is reading and teaching from that same book. And for the most part, they will recommend the Bible that they teach out of. I recommend the 1611 King James Version because it is the most accurate coming from the Greek to the English in the first. The rest have been altered. And like I said earlier, there's 80,000 versions of the Bible out there today, ladies and gentlemen. That's a crafty man thinks he is. And to do a disservice to your fellow human being is unimaginable in the eyes of my great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Just think about this, ladies and gentlemen. These egotistical, finite mind and finite wisdom people that think they're so very wise in the ways of this world have thought it enough to absolutely keep you from eternal life, the saving grace of God given to us by Jesus Christ, by the finished work of the cross that Jesus Christ did at Calvary for us and to us and gave us the revelation of the mystery of what we should live by today for our salvation, they are going to deny you that very free gift. Thinking they have it right. Thinking you should listen to them because they were programmed, they were taught by their denominations, by the schools that they went to, the universities, the Bible colleges, the seminary colleges, to get these fancy degrees that they can hang on the wall. It's been, and they are controlled by their denominations. That's why many denominations got together and created this new version of the Bible. It can fit a multitude of areas of narratives. God's word from 1611, King James, cannot. It's one specific doctrine one specific command. And it should apply to all denominations. It should apply to all non-denominations. It should apply to all so-called Christian organizations, Christianities, and religions. But it doesn't. Because it doesn't fit man's doctrines, man's narrative, man's ideologies. He finds it more successful over the last 2,000 years to preach the mixed gospel message. You don't divide anything. It's all one and the same. If you dissect the word of truth, which is the gospel of your salvation, you will find man has been lying to you all this time. Because they are difference is night and day. The difference is life and death, ladies and gentlemen. To understand what is the gospel of your salvation that you need to rightly divide? You will only find in Romans 2 Philemon because that obtains to you and for you. We are to know all of the scripture is for our learning so that we don't get roped into the dangers of believing one gospel versus another as they're combined. We need to separate them and understand from God's word which gospel is not only for us, but to us. And it's all laid out in Scripture very plainly and very clearly, if you rightly divide the word of truth. If you listen to mankind that has altered, dangerously altered, this very critical verse in Scripture, you will be led astray. You will be led to your spiritual death, ladies and gentlemen. They won't even blink, blink an eye. And you're going to stand there with no excuse. You're going to stand there thinking you had salvation all along because you listen to mankind. You listen to these altered versions of the Bible because it made sense to you and you're comfortable with it. 
because you believed your pastor, you believed your church, you believed your Christian organization, you believed Christianity, you believed religion. And look where it gets you, to the lake of fire, ladies and gentlemen, denying the very work of the cross, although you think you aren't. It's giving you a false salvation because they were handling the word of God carefully. They were careful already to give you what it is that wasn't truthful. Conniving, deceitful, lying in wait to deceive you. That's what mankind does. Because mankind isn't a liar because he lied to you. He lied to you because he was a liar from the beginning. And in him is no truth. The truth is only in the word of God. Numbers 23, 19 says that God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. It's impossible for God to lie. Look it up in Hebrews. Man was a liar from the beginning. So who are you going to believe? You look it up. Study it, ladies and gentlemen, the way God commands you to be. It's a commandment of God. Everything Paul writes is a commandment of God because of what Paul writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 37. If any man think himself to be spiritual or a prophet, let him acknowledge the things that I write unto you are commandments of the Lord. Paul wrote to us, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a command of God. The only way you're going to come to accept it and believe it and have your light of Jesus Christ's gospel shine into your heart is to believe the gospel of Jesus Christ found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. Verse 1 says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein ye stand. Verse 2, By which also you are saved, if you keep in memory what was preached unto you. Verse 3, For I delivered first of all unto you that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures. And verse 4, And that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Do you believe that? By faith and faith alone, no works. You are saved by the grace of God through faith. In Jesus Christ, the finished work of the cross. It's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Not of yourselves. It's a gift of God. But you're only going to know that if you rightly divide the word of truth. And you're going to find there's only one true gospel to save you in your salvation today. It's found in the body of Christ's doctrine. And the only way you're going to find it is to rightly divide the word of truth. You listen to man, you're going to go to hell in the lake of fire. You listen to God, you have a chance at eternal life with Jesus Christ. Make the right choice. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Appreciate you listening. Home Bible study from my home to your home. This is Robert Holland thanking you. And always remember, until next time.